of your word. We pray in Jesus' name, God, that you would teach us out of your word. We need to hear from you, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father, we don't wait until the battle is over, but we give you praise right now. We bless you now, O oh God, for what you're doing. We give you glory, God, for what you're getting ready to do. Lord, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for signs. We thank you for wonders, O oh God, in the lives of your people. Father, we thank you for the word that you're going to share with us. A word of help, a word of challenge, a word of strength. We give you praise. Bless these that are in this room. 
Bless these that are watching via social media. Father, we pray, God, that even over the video waves, the airways, God, that God, that you would move mightily in the lives of your people. And we praise you for it now. We give you glory in advance for wondrous working power being displayed among us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. We give God praise. We give him glory. And we give him honor on tonight. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. It's good to see all of you here tonight for worship and Bible study on Empowerment Tuesday. Amen. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Are you glad when they say unto you, let us go into the house of of the Lord. Yes. Amen. It is a good thing that brethren dwell together. Amen. In unity. Amen. And so we bless God tonight for all of you who have joined us. Amen. We're going to share in the word of the Lord what we feel the Lord has laid upon our hearts to share with you this week uh, for Empowerment Tuesday. Amen. And I believe that it's a word that's going to empower all of us and help us to prepare uh, all the more diligently and be more alert and aware of what God is having you to do in this season in your life. Amen. Because God wants you to be aware. Amen. God wants you to be aware. He wants you to be aware. Amen. And so we want to know what the Lord is saying to us in this season. Amen. So tonight's topic for Bible study or Empowerment Tuesday is uh, distractions. Distractions. Beware of distractions. Beware of distractions. I've learned and am still learning uh, that when the Lord gives us assignments, when the Lord gives us things to do, when he's sending us forth, we've got to understand that there's always going to be a set of distractions there to hinder you. There are things that are going to come your way that are specifically designed to take you off of your square, to take us off of our focus. There are things that are specifically released. Sometimes they come from hell. Sometimes they come from a lack of discipline. Sometimes they come from people who don't want to see you successful. Sometimes distractions are very honest in nature. They are not intended to pull us off, but there are things that are there. And so tonight we're going to explore distractions. We're going to explore uh, what distractions come from, what are distractions, how do you define distractions, uh, but then how do we overcome distractions? And I'm sure that everyone who's listening tonight, who's watching tonight, has in some way experienced distractions, things that have taken you off task and off focus for what you have set out to do. Amen. Yes. And so it's important that we recognize uh, the things that are distracting us because a distraction is going to take us off task and cause us to go into a totally different arena than what God has called for us to do. Amen. And so I like to define things. I like to start by having the same or similar basis of understanding. And so let's take a look at the word distraction and by definition what it means. All right. One definition of a distraction is a thing that present that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. A thing that prevents someone from giving their full attention to something else. A distraction is a thing that's going to stop us or that is put there to stop us or that has the ability to stop us from giving our full attention to something else. And so there's a couple of key words that I want to point out in this definition. One is the first one, a thing. Amen. <laughs> what right. is a thing? Come on now. Right? Who is a thing? Right? All right. Where is a thing? All right. It's a noun. It's a form of a noun. It's unspecified in the definition. In other words, what it's saying is that anything uh, can be used as a distraction. Anyone can be used as a distraction, right? Anything that prevents, that's the second word I want to point out there, prevents, prevents. Anytime you're doing something that you've set out to accomplish an end goal, 
And there are something or some things or someone or persons that prevent or set out to prevent that. Those things or those people are distractions. And so what we have to do is we have to learn to keep the end goal, excuse me, the end goal in mind. What are you anticipating to happen as a result of what you're doing? That's how you do that. What am I anticipating to happen as a result of what I am doing? And when you answer that question, then you ask, what do I need to do to get to where I'm going to get the results that I'm trying to achieve? And when you have that understanding and when you think of it from that premise, then you become more aware of the things, right, that will try to prevent you or that will prevent you. Understand this, that every distraction is not necessarily intentional. All right. There are some times when when distractions appear to be legitimate or a legitimate reason or cause for us to move off focus from what we're doing. All right. So we're going to talk about some of those in just a little bit. The other part I want to point out in this definition is that it says giving your full attention. So something to prevent full attention. Full attention means to be fully present. It means that your mind is there. It means that your heart is there. It means that our emotions are there and that we're physically there. There are lots of times where we're in a place, where people are in a place, and they are not fully, uh, they're not fully present. Your mind is somewhere else. You're thinking about tomorrow. You're thinking about incidents from today, but you're not fully present. And so to say that I've given full attention means that all that I have is in this that I'm doing. And I'm seeking out for an expected end. Remember when God tells Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, right? Thoughts of peace and not of harm, not to harm you, not to hurt you, but to give you or bring you to an expected end or to your future hope when translation reads it, right? And so you've got to know when Jesus came, when God released Jesus from heaven, he had an expected end. His expected end was right. to die for our sins. His expected end was to teach the life that he lived, was to minister, was to manifest signs and wonders, was to prove himself as the manifestation or the righteousness of the law that the people were bound to. Remember, in Hebrews 10, he says to God, prepare me a body. Mm -hmm. He says, I know that you do not delight in the sacrifices of bulls and, and, and rams. This is not what it is. Though the blood of animals was good to cover sin, but Jesus needed to come to wash away our sins. The old hymn says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It says in Hebrews 9 and 10 that every year they would go and they would bring their animals, but they would come back with more animals for the same sins. And so their sins were being covered, but Jesus came with an expected end. There's a song that says he was born to die. That's what he was born to do. Jesus was born to die. In other words, he came here to accomplish his assignment and then check out. Remember Gethsemane, right? That was his emotions. That was a distraction. He realized that when he got to the point of nevertheless, mm -hmm. nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So here we go. You have to focus with fully attentive to something in order for a distraction to even occur. So that in and of itself teaches us that if I'm doing, if I'm not being distracted, that means that I'm not giving my full attention to anything. Mm -hmm. And if you're not being distracted, if I'm not being distracted because we're not giving our full attention to anything, then it begs the question, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And why are we doing what wow. we're doing? Wow. All right. And so when you have that understanding, now you got to go back to the last series we did on vision. Mm -hmm. 
and you've got to get your vision together and you've got to get your assignment, which we talked before we talked vision. And when you understand with clarity your assignment and what God has graced you to do and what God has anointed you to do, then you have your marching orders. You now clearly know and you clearly understand what should have your full attention. Right, right. All right. Let me, I'm all out of order in my notes, but let me help you. A major distraction is this infamous phrase or term called multitasking. We thought wishes and boil a pot of beans all at the same time. But when you do that, you're going to give something more attention right. than something else. Right. So if you're cooking on the stove, you're liable to burn something that you're cooking because when you go to switch the clothes in the laundry yeah. from the washer to the dryer, Come you forgot down. that you left the dishwater running Come in the sink down. and now you hear something trickling down the wall in the basement and you <laughs> rush to do that. You never stop the sink Come and now down. you're mopping up the water and the, boy, the beans are burning. Well, oh my. Come on now. But we thought that when we figured out how to multitask, that we were maximizing what we're doing. God taught me this lesson about a year ago. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is really more. And so what you have to understand is that these are, uh, this type of lesson is a lesson in structure and discipline in the lives of us as believers. And so what God is saying to us tonight is that we have to learn how to be disciplined sons and daughters. We have to learn how to be disciplined in the things that God has assigned and called us to. There's nothing like getting a C on an assignment or on an exam and you made careless errors. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot of times in grammar. Mm -hmm. And in math, well. when I taught math, it was it was supremely important that you showed your work mm -hmm. because I wasn't always necessarily interested in the fact that whether or not you got the right answer. Mm -hmm. I was more interested in the process that you went through to get the answer. And so if you produce an answer but don't show your thinking, right. I don't know how you got to where you were. And if your answer is wrong, mm -hmm. I don't know how to go back and correct you. Mm -hmm. And so it's nothing like getting a, a paper back or, or a test back and say, man, I got a C and I really could have had an A because I knew that. I knew that. Careless mistakes. Right. And so when you're distracted, you will make, I will make careless mistakes. And so we got to understand that sometimes less is more. I don't know where this multitasking thing came from. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not saying that we can't do it. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. What I'm saying is that we can't overwhelm ourselves with more tasks at one time than we're really able to handle. Come on. All right. Because what tends to happen is that stuff goes lacking. And stuff is being missed that should not be missed. Amen. So how do we do this? How do we how do we deal with distraction? How do we focus on not being distracted? How do we overcome this? One thing I'm going to tell you is that you got to have rest. Amen. I don't know. That just came from the Holy Spirit. because That wasn't on my paper. Well, but you need rest. Amen. There's nothing more frustrating than being tired, <laughs> exhausted, and trying to accomplish something that you need to get done. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been tired and couldn't focus on the task at hand? So in order to focus, in order not to have to even deal with distraction, you have to be rested. You have to be prepared for the assignment at hand. You have to be ready. Amen? So, um, knowing the end goal. When you set out for something, you have to keep your focus on the end goal. What am I doing? Where am I going? What are my expected outcomes? 
right? And so once you understand that, then you got to know that there are types of distractions that are going to come your way. Distractions come to make you lose focus. Yes. All right. So the types of distractions that we have, I'm just going to share three, right? Three sources, I should say. Three sources of distraction. And we're going to work our way through this. Three, and I have scripture. I'm not just talking. I do have scripture for this lesson. Three sources of distraction. Number one, ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. All right, one, one, one type or form of distraction, the first one is us, all right? We are sometimes our own distractions. We distract ourselves, all right? Uh, let's go up to, um, mm, mm. you can really go to verse 24, right? Um, so that's something that no man can serve two masters. You either love the one and hate the other one, right? Uh, verse 25, take no thought uh, for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or yet for your body, what shall you put on it? Um, is not the life more than the meat, right? Behold the fowls of the air. Everything is being taken care of. Then you get down to uh, verse number 29. Jesus said, yet I say unto you that even Solomon, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Talking about the flowers and plants and things that Jesus had taken care of already. All right. Then you go down to verse 31. It says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all things. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to be able to come to grips with is, am I trusting myself or am I trusting the Lord? Mm -hmm. All right? And if I'm trusting the Lord, and this is in some things, right? You don't need to trust the Lord to do your chores. <laughs> All right, let's not be so deep. You don't need to trust the Lord and seek first the kingdom of God. Get the laundry done, sweep the floor, mop the floor, take the trash out. You know, those are things you know how to do, right? I'm talking spiritually here, right? And so when you know that God has everything you need, he says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And so what he's telling us as individuals is, I'm giving you a, a very clear, right? focus. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you something to put your full attention to so that you can get to the place and have experienced the outcomes mm -hmm. that I have for you. If you seek me first and the righteousness of my kingdom, then the things that you worry about won't be an issue for you because That's they will be there. When was the last time you experienced God provide something for you and you forgot you even asked that you Come needed it? Come on, when was the last time that you were focused on something and then the last thing you were focused on and you just let it go and kind of forgot about it, God now manifests that thing in your life. Amen. Why? Because you took your focus off of that and you put your focus perhaps on the thing that you needed to be focused on. And so he tells him in 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, right? And then he tells us all later in the uh, New Testament, he says, be anxious for nothing. And a lot of times we bring anxiety on ourselves. A lot of times we bring anxiety upon ourselves. I was driving home today and I was already thinking about Christmas dinner. <laughs> I know, right? Random, right? But I've already decided, here's my point in sharing this. I've already decided that that, that we're going to, to have a seafood Christmas. Mm. Okay. I've already decided that. Mm -hmm. that's, already, that's already in my mind. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I want and that's, that's what we're going to have, right? <laughs> Lady British, we having a seafood Christmas, bro. <laughs> I guess I have no seafood. Uh, and, and whatever else she adds to the menu. Well. Amen. Uh, but seafood's going to be in well. there, right? So now I'm thinking, hmm, should I make gumbo? Uh, 
I know Lady British likes gumbo, right? She's not gonna knock that out, right? Uh, I have some lobster. What can I do with some lobster? Hmm. Can I grill some fish? Right? Should I fry some fish? So I'm thinking all this about Christmas dinner, right? Next month, you know, down the line. And then I'm thinking like, but we didn't take our trip to New Orleans to get the blue crabs and the fresh shrimp and all of this and that. Now, I could have gone in a whole nother direction, is my point, and became anxious about getting to New Orleans to get fresh seafood at a great low price. And then I could have become consumed with trying to figure out in the calendar how we're going to get there between now and Christmas and get the cooler, blah, blah, blah. That would have been anxiety that I would have been bringing upon myself. Doing the most, right? Right? And so we have to understand that a lot of times we distract ourselves. Things that we use or that, that life brings and allow us to use as distractions, one of them is fear. Fear, I talked about this last week or the week before. Fear manifests in different ways. Fear isn't always like, oh my God, I can't know. You know, fear comes by blame. I said that last week, I think. Sometimes fear and blame attach themselves to one another. Right? How come you didn't do what you agreed to doing? Why weren't you fully attentive to what what prevented you? There's a verse in the Bible that says, you did run well. well. Who hindered you? <laughs> what prevented you? What stopped you from doing what you were doing? You were running well. You were moving in the right direction. You were working the work of him who sent you while it is day. But who hindered you? Are you the thing that's preventing you, yourself, from being fully attentive to the things that God has assigned to your hands? All right? And so you can't allow fear to be a distraction. And I know we do it. I know we do. Why did you do that? Well, because so-and-so didn't do this. And no one else, there we go, blaming excuses. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I was afraid of the outcome. Amen. Wow. And, and the sooner we can come to grips and be honest with our own self, Shakespeare said, to thine own mm -hmm. self, be true. Mm -hmm. You can lie to me, mm -hmm. but you can't lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. we, I, can't, I can lie to you, but I can't lie to myself. Mm -hmm. I cannot trick my own self. And so when you understand that you get it in, you got to deal with it. And if it's fear, deal with fear. If you make excuses, deal with what's connected to the excuse, which is usually a lot of times lack of accountability or fear. I don't want to own it because I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know how they're going to feel. I don't know what the consequences are going to be. But I've learned, as the scripture says, agree quickly with your adversary. And so if you're wrong, say I'm wrong. And keep moving. Now, the other person has an issue if you own it and you confess to it, you're accountable and responsible to them. And if they can't move forward, then they have an issue. But don't let it be said that you're distracted because you're not doing your part and then you want to cover it up with lack of accountability, blame and excuse. Another, another reason we distract ourselves is we're not motivated. Lack of motivation. We sit there. Remember when, um, when, when Elijah... I think it was right after uh, he was going against the, the false prophets. And he said, the God, the God whose God answers by fire is the true God, right? Mm -hmm. And so, boom, fire comes, he puts them all down. And then here comes Jezebel, mm -hmm. sending him a message. Mm -hmm. As sure as I'm standing here, by this time tomorrow, the same thing's going to happen to you. And what did he do? He took what she said and went up underneath the juniper tree and became depressed. Mm -hmm. Because of something that someone else said. That's the second source of distraction. Other people. Other people. And so now she sends him a message. It says by the next day. When you read that further. I think that's uh, 1 Kings 19 chapter. When you read that down further. You'll find that the angel came and brought him nourishment. He ate it. The angel came back and brought him nourishment. He ate it. And the Bible says that he went in the strength of it for 40 days. 
Now, she didn't kill him the next day because he went in the strength of the food for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Then he went and hid in the cave. And God had to do all these signs and wonders to try to get his attention until he says, you know what? Since you're going to be distracted, you're going to let Jezebel prevent you. Go and find this dude plowing the field for his father and cast your mantle upon him. Because if you can't follow through, then I've got somebody else who's in the training field, who's working out, who's being conditioned to wait for their next assignment. Come on. And so he's plowing the field until the man of God comes, releases the mantle. Now, God still uses Elijah after that. But Elisha gets a double portion. Amen. Amen. And so you've got to be careful that when stuff happens, that when your motivation is attacked, and it will happen. I am, I am not a super deep Christian, and I am not a super deep preacher. Because I know that life is real. Yeah. And so when, 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 when something comes and it knocks you off your square, then that's when you need to own it. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got to own it. I'm distracted. Mm -hmm. What am I distracted by? Discouragement, lack of motivation, mm -hmm. feeling lonely, feeling like I'm the only one, feeling like it's just me, myself, mm -hmm. and I, right? Don't nobody cares. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen, right? You get to those places. It happens. Mm -hmm. But when you sit there and you wallow in it, it now becomes the thing that will prevent you from being fully focused on what you're assigned to do. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need 40 days like Elijah, mm -hmm. right? You pray and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to build you back up and you get up. Mm -hmm. We preach Sunday about that. You got to hold on. You got to fight. And you might be walking and not even want to walk. Come on, you might be working and not. you might not be fully present, but sometimes it takes that, that, that presence, whatever percentage of it, to get you back in the swing of things. And what God does is he allows you to see small successes, small successes to build your motivation, to re-encourage you, to reinvigorate you, to re-inspire you. He gives you this success and then this one and then this one and then now you're breathing. You're back up in the air, the air is fresh, you're taking a deep breath and a sigh and you're moving forward fully attentive again. Mm -hmm. Alright, mm -hmm. so don't let fear, don't let lack of response, uh, lack of motivation uh, come to you. Lack of motivation is connected to your heart not being in it. Mm -hmm. If your heart mm -hmm. is not in it, mm -hmm. if by any means you can get out of it, yeah. let it go. Because now, if our hearts are in something, now we become the distraction. We become the people that's on the list of distractions for somebody else. Don't be a distraction to someone else. Jesus tells him in the, in the Gospels, he says that if you come to bring your gift, and you know your brother has an art against you, leave your gift at the altar and go back and get that right. Right? And so you need to be able to deal with that. You need to be able to move forward in that. Another thing we use uh, is attached to excuses is responsibility. Oh, I had to do this. And I had to do that. And then when I went over here to do that, then this happened. And then after that, then this happened. I was not expecting all of that. <laughs> right? But when our focus is right, mm -hmm. right? Right. Then we get to the next place. I have I have learned how to disengage when it's time for when, when something is distracting me from what I'm doing. I should say I am learning how to disengage from my distractions or my distractors and move back into the thing that I'm doing. Have you ever talked to somebody and they don't give you eye contact? It's because you're distracting them nine times out of ten. They're not interested in what you're saying. <laughs> they're looking at their phone they're looking over there they're looking at the computer screen right. stop talking because they're not fully present I'm guilty I've done it not being fully present when someone was talking to me because at the end of the discussion they asked me a question Right. Yeah. And I can't even answer. <laughs> oh, I just told on myself. I've right. been talking to me for 20 minutes, and then you ask me a question, and I, huh? Right? right. Because I was, yeah. I was distracted, or you were distracting me. 
Perhaps you should have asked me if this was a good time to have this discussion. Perhaps you should have asked me if I was available. And then the part that I'm learning is to say, you know what? This is not the best time for me. I want to give you my undivided attention. I want to be fully present in what you want to engage me on. But right now is not the optimal time for that. Or do you mind talking while I keep working? Because this is my focus. You're a distraction. You keep talking, but I'm going to be working. I'm going to set that out in front. Now, if you want to keep talking, just don't ask me no questions because I might not be able to answer because I've already told you that I was focused on this one thing. All right? I'm just being honest. I know I'm not the only one who have had these types of experiences. I know that I'm not. Right? You on Periscope and you on Facebook, I know I'm not by myself. And all of you all is your I know I'm not alone. Right? And so you've got to be able to deal with those things. So other people, remember Nehemiah when he was building the wall. They were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And Sambalit and them, right, the other people, they came and they kept trying to pull Nehemiah away. Because they wanted to kill him. They wanted to pull him away, have all these discussions, and try to set him up uh, 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 to, to, to get jacked up and to kill him and so that the work that he was leading. Let me show you how attentive to his work Nehemiah was. Nehemiah wasn't moved by them jokers one bit. He said they want to fight. Are you right-handed? Yeah. You need to fight with your right hand or hammer with your right hand. What can you do most effectively with your right hand? Get your armor and get your tools. Work, stop, fight, stop, work, stop, fight. Whatever you got to do. He's like, we're getting this wall up. And I believe it was 52 days that they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem because they were focused and they didn't allow other people to come and distract them. Guess who did? Samson. Well, sir, come on. Samson liked women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, Samson found his wife among the Philistines. Yes, Daddy, Mama, I want that girl. Yeah. And they said, aren't there any fine girls amongst your people? <laughs> the children of Israel, they were under Philistine uh, captivity then. And he's like, that's the one I want. So they go talk to her dad, go and get her. And then he got a little cocky. Samson had a cocky streak. Yeah, he had a little cockiness in him, right? And so he says to the people, as he's getting ready for the feast in seven days, I'm going to give you all this riddle. Try to figure it out. Tell me the answer at the thing, and I'm going to give you whatever it was he said he was going to give them, right? This is Judges chapter 15, I think, 14 or 15, right? You want to read that. And so then they couldn't figure it out. What did they know Samson's weakness was? Women. Thank you, Jerry. His women. So they go to his wife. We're going to kill you. If you don't find out the answer to this riddle, right? And so now, they're, they're she pressing him. Why in the world would you give these people this riddle and you won't even give me the answer? Because I know you were going to give it to them. But I'm just trying to have a little fun. Maybe we can already get married. You know, blah, 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 blah. He way off task. Mm -hmm. Way off task. And so what ends up happening is he almost loses his wife. Amen. So on the seventh day, he tells her, and then she tells them, now he got to go kill some people so that he can make a promise because he didn't think they were going to figure out the riddle. And they really didn't. And so now he got to go kill these people so he can come through with his promise here. His focus was preparing for his wedding. And so now he's distracted, and then now he's got to go deal with the Philistines because of this. And guess what? The daddy gave the girl to somebody else. Because you're not focused. If you can't focus enough to get to be with my daughter like this, when I give her to you, you're not going to take time to focus on her and her needs. Amen. So guess what? I'm going to give her to somebody else. So now he gets all mad. Now the Philistines, then he got a new girlfriend, Delilah. And the Philistines come and they say, well, you know, Delilah, it worked for the other girl, so we're going to try it on you. Because, you know, one of his weaknesses is women. Right? And so find out, oh, baby. Oh, and then he tells a lie, and, you know, make it up, and blah, 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 blah. He goes in, blah, 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 blah. And then finally, she cried enough. I ain't even gonna go there. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost, for saving me out of that one. She cried enough, and he said, and he cut the second lock, shut the mind up. <laughs> That's where my strength is, right? <laughs> Right, so that's on my screen. Boom, they got it. By the way, let me add it. The scripture does say that the Lord had designed for him yes. to go after that Philistine girl. Mm -hmm. 
It says that in the text. If you go, I think it's Judges chapter 14 or 15, uh, where it says that it was actually the Lord uh, that guided him to that woman, that they didn't really know that it was of the Lord. Uh, that's chapter 14, Judges, verse 4. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord and sought an occasion against the, uh, and that he, God, sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines uh, had dominion over Israel, right? So, uh, in getting married and choosing a girl, he was on point. But the riddle, I'm not sure about, right? I don't know. I study that when I begin to see. But I don't think that. That was a distraction for him. Right, a little cocky street, right? But anyway, so what you got to understand is that people have distractions. So the lighter gets him, he gets mad, they take his eyes out, his hair starts to grow back, and then now he gets enough strength to conquer them. And so doing, he dies himself. Mm-hmm. All right? So you could take a couple things away from that. You could take away from that is that some distractions are deadly. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Some distractions are deadly. Some distractions will literally kill you. Lord, help us. Holy Ghost, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> Texting and driving can kill you. Amen. Come on down. Surfing the web while driving can kill you. Amen. If you are driving, you, we, I, us's need to be fully attentive to the road. Amen. Right now, I've taught a lot of people in my family, friends, whatever, how to drive. Right? Hey, you driving? Keep your eyes. This mirror, that mirror, this mirror, the speedometer over your shoulder, and keep it truck. That's how I teach you. Got to keep moving because anything else, you are gonna miss something. Yeah. And this car that's in your blind spot, yeah. when it comes over, you need to jump over. You don't know that there's a car over here because you're not doing what I'm teaching you to do. And your eyes are moving. Don't look down at the nose of the car. Look ahead so your periphery is open and you'll see all of these things. And when you're focused, the more focused you are, the more hindrances you'll see. Amen. All right, and you don't become distracted. I don't know where I am in my notes. The third source of distraction, the first one is us ourselves. The second source of distraction is other people. We talked about Nehemiah there. We also talked about Samson and how he was distracted. The third source of distraction, go to Luke 22, 31. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 22 and 31. Let's go there. Let's see what this... Uh, this third source of distraction is. Luke 22 and 31, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, who? Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you are converted... Strengthen your brother. So the third source of distraction is Satan himself. When they came back and told Jesus of all the things they had done and they were excited, he says to them, hey, behold, I've seen Satan like lightning fall. In other words, he's telling them, watch out for this fella because he's coming for you. And so it tells Peter that the devil desires to sift you as wheat. He desires to come and take you so far off track My God. that you miss what I call you to do. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on to tell Peter uh, that you're going to deny me, okay. right? Three yeah. times. Mm-hmm. And you're going to go on. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. Go back to verse 32. It says, when you are converted, strengthen your brother. When you figure out how to beat the devil who's coming to sift you as weak, Go and help your brother or your sister who the devil is trying to sift as well. That could also mean when you do deny me and you repent and get converted again, tell all those other folks that I'm real. Strengthen them and make sure they know that I'm real. Tell them your testimony, Peter. I walked with the man. He prophesied to me and told me I would deny him. It wasn't in my heart to deny him, but what happened? When they came and said I knew him, what hit me? Fear. And it distracted me from the truth of who Jesus really was. 
But now let me tell you, he gave me grace. He accepted me again. Don't you deny Jesus. Right? So when you do that, when you get that, you got to understand that the devil wants to kill you. There was a parable where they came and they said, well, uh, somebody has sown uh, uh, weeds among the wheat. He said, let them grow together. Because what happens if you get distracted by the enemy that's come to sow weeds amongst your wheat, now you got to go and do what? You got to pull up your wheat mm -hmm. and then separate and replant. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the damage if you pull up your wheat? Mm -hmm. So he says that the wheat and the tear grow together. Mm -hmm. And then when they get up, then you deal with it. Right. right? So that tells me that some things that we're dealing with, we got to wait till they get to a level of maturity so that we can knock it out. Mm -hmm. So we can deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so when the enemy comes, when you look at the enemy, uh, if you look at how Jesus, um, how Jesus in Matthew chapter number four, verses one through 11, this is, the Bible says that uh, after he had fasted, uh, he was led in, uh, by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted. Mm -hmm. Jesus was led there to be tempted, right? Mm -hmm. And so some distractions that come your way are there to build you. Yeah. We talked about that on Sunday. Some of the things you're dealing with, some of the things you're going through are to help you. That God's testing you. He's purifying you. He's making sure that you are ready to handle what he's getting ready to release to come your way. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be bread. If you're as focused as you really are. If you're fully present like you put off that you are, then let me distract you. And he gives him the word, and then he keeps on moving. And he gives him the word, and he keeps on moving, right? But then when you get down to, um, uh, what verse is that? What we find in verse number 10. Mm -hmm. He says, now, okay, he keep coming. Uh, I'll give you all these things. Then Jesus in verse 10, Matthew 4, 10, then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. I'm going to close with this. It is when Jesus either felt overwhelmed by the enemy's distraction, which is not likely because it was Jesus, but when he got tired of hearing the devil's mouth, he shut him down. Amen. He shut him down. And just like he did those Pharisees, I think in Matthew 22 or Mark 22, he shut them down. And so when you get tired of being distracted from your assignment, from your giftedness, from your calling, you will shut down your distractions. If it's a male, if it's a female, if it's a job, if it's a TV show, if whatever your distractor is, when you get tired of being off task enough, when you get tired of failing enough and not succeeding enough, then you'll shut down your distractors. You don't have to pick up the phone. Just because it rings Come on now. doesn't mean you have to answer it. Amen. Just because the church, ding, somebody's on Periscope, ding, somebody Facebook inbox you, ding, somebody text you, ding, there was a voicemail, ding, they Snapchat you, ding. There's so many dings on these phones right. these days. Amen. We need to ding the phone and silence Amen. it. Amen. You sitting there reading the word. Oh, prophet Jujuju is on, on Periscope. <laughs> what is he? What's the word of the Lord? Are you in the word? Right. Oh, right. Jujuju, what does said the Lord? He's telling you right here. Amen. Come on now. Right? Amen. So we got to know when to shut down the distractors. Right. And guess what? If you can't help me, you can only hinder me. That's right. It's only two things. You're either gonna you're either gonna add to my life or build my life, or you're gonna take away and destroy my life. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that I'm I'm not assigned to sow or pour into you, because you pouring that I'm pouring into you, 
And when, when I get through tilting my picture and I lean it straight up, guess who's behind me? Somebody else that God has assigned to pour into me. So I'm not saying that if God is using me to pour into somebody or to give or to build or to disciple somebody that they're taking away from me. That's not what I'm saying. Because freely you give, guess what? Freely you receive. So I'm dumping into you and giving you life and building you up. What's happening to me? Somebody Somebody's reciprocating and they're dumping into my life and they're filling me up so that I can have what I need to continue to move, Amen. right? Amen. That's the law of reciprocity. But then there are people Come who on. won't receive what you pour Come into them. Now. They put a lid on their cup and everything you're pouring is going to the ground. Those are the people that just want, want, want. They're leeches. And they want to get everything they can from you and leave you high and dry. Amen. That's what I mean by people taking away. Come on. God, he, the, 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 commission, the mission was to make disciples. Amen. And you cannot make disciples if you don't take time and pour Amen. into them. Amen. Right. So I'm not saying that. Don't, don't let the devil trick your mind. That's not what I'm saying. But there are times when people call and they just want to talk. <laughs> and what did you need? I don't know. Can you pick me up? Can you give me $25? Can you give my clothes out to clean? Oh, I forgot this. On your way, can you do this? What, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> right? And so when they when it's always taken away, taken away, taken away, you gotta look at that. Amen. You gotta you gotta take the time, you gotta Amen. step back and examine it. And he got to ask the Holy Spirit. Am I to endure this because there's an assignment for me in this person's life or when this person has an assignment in my life or is this a distraction? Are they trying to get the answer to a riddle? Are they trying to find Come out where now. my weakness lies? Or are they trying to get me off the wall? Or are they trying to see if 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 I can give them enough information so they can come and help me build a wall? Holy Spirit, Come show me now. the Come person on. why they're in my life. Right, right, right. All right? And so you got to be able to shut your distractors down. Thank you you got to be able to do that. Verse 11, the devil left Jesus and behold, the angels came to minister unto him. The angels came to minister, to replenish, to give back to Christ. They came to give back to him. So when you get through dealing with your distractions, with your distractors, some of them are going to drain your energy. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to take time. They're going to take virtue from you. Right? Psalm 91, we talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. We talked about that place of refuge. Amen, amen. That's what Psalm 91 is. And when you get to that place, oh, yeah. it says that he will give his angels charge, charge over you to keep you. Right? And so when you do that, then God already has it set so that when you challenge your distractions, on, <laughs> whatever it takes out of you, He's going to send ministering angels to you to, to meet your needs. He's going to give his angels charge over you to make sure that you're taken care of. Amen? Amen? And so you've got to know that he's got it set up for you to be successful. And it is the will of the Lord that you are fully attentive and that you are fully engaged Amen. in the Amen. things that he Amen. has set out for you to do. Amen? Amen. You have an assignment. Amen. You have a work to do. And God has said, now Jesus has said, he told them himself, I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day. For night comes and no man will be able to work. You have got to ignore your distractions. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years, when Jesus was in that crowd, she could care less. About them seeing blood on her clothes, Amen. blood running down her leg. She had to have smell like Amen. something. So she was like, whatever. Amen. The man whose friends Jesus was in the house. I got to get him in. You know, we can't get in. And they said, look, bro, we want you. We're not studying these people. We're not studying these lines. Our focus is on Jesus. Amen. And getting you up out of this cop. We're going through the roof. Amen. 
And so when you focus on your task and on your assignment, you will do, I will do that which is necessary in order to accomplish what God has assigned for us to accomplish. Amen? Amen. So distractions. Beware of distractions. Amen. You've got to beware of distractions. Amen. They are going to come. Amen. Yep. All right? So focus on your assignment. Walk in the things of the Lord that he has called you to walk into and be who God has called you to be. There's greatness inside of you. There's There are wonders to behold Amen. in your life. Amen. I speak that over you tonight. Amen. That there are wonders to behold or to be held in your life. That people need to see the manifestations and the glory of the Lord in your life. Who sinned that this man was born blind in John 9? It wasn't his mother. It wasn't his father. But it was that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. So whatever you're dealing with, hold on. Be encouraged. Lift your head up. Be like David. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, I thank you. And you just got to start praising God and worshiping God in tears and pain and frustration uh, and confusion, lacking clarity, lacking direction. Lord, if nothing else ain't right, I know I got to praise. And everything give thanks. It's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. So I'm going to give you glory any old way. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to honor you because this is what you delight. You delight in obedience. So if I can't do this, I can't fix this, I can't give you this, let me at least be obedient and to your word that says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord and everything give thanks for the will. Lord, I thank you. I don't see it. I don't understand it. It hurts. It sucks. It's crazy. Crazy. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but look, if I'm not going to make it, I'm going to go out praising you. I'm going to go out worshiping you. I'm going to go out adoring you. I'm going to go out honoring you, God. And that's hard to do sometimes. Sometimes it's easy. Oh, whatever. I'm going to praise him in advance. Dance in advance. You know, we just get all excited and we, you know, sometimes you can do that. And there are those times it's like, Lord, if you don't help me, I quit. You don't come, Holy Spirit, you might as well look. You can give me an angel to feed me for 40 days, I'm done. But get there. What you got to do is you got to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. You got to ask the Holy Spirit to motivate you, to encourage you. And you know what I found out in those weak moments? best thing I can do. It's almost like when Jesus tells you to fast, wash your face more. The best thing I can do is get up, take a bath, take a shower, put on some clothes, and just say, here I am. Take a deep breath and just jump back in. Sink or swim, Lord, here I am. And that's what I want to speak into your life tonight. Sink or swim, Lord, here I am. Be like Peter. I'm coming. If you beat me, I'm coming. Come on, Peter. Oh, 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 I'm right here. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. So be encouraged, men of God, be encouraged, women of God, that the Lord is looking out for you. That Psalms, I think it's 138 and 8, the Lord is perfecting those things that concern you. It concerns you, and it has something to do with his best and plan for your life. He's going to perfect it. Know that. Know that whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, God is going to perfect it. Pick yourself up. I'm picking you up tonight in the spirit. I'm lifting you up tonight in the spirit. You don't have to lose this one. You don't have to go down this time. You don't have to lose. Amen? Amen. You don't have to lose. Listen, we're going to sow into ministry on tonight. If you have an offering, if you have a seed that you want to give, uh, in the offering on tonight, you can do that. If you want to give me a text message or the Spoken Word Fellowship app, you can do that. Uh, to text your offering, you can do it to 708-265-3303, 708-265-3303. I want to thank you for all you've already done. Some of you give through text message or in different cities and things. Uh, but I want to appreciate what you do for Spoken Word Fellowship. Uh, we're gearing up for next year, and we're just 
Man, I can't wait to share what, what our spiritual focus for 2017 is. Uh, it's explosive, and uh, I'm still getting it. God's still helping me with it. Um, but just get ready, 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 get ready. It's going to be a year of explosive things. That's not it. This is going to be a year of explosive things. You're going to see a lot that you've been waiting for. You're going to see a lot that you've been hoping for. And it's going to manifest for you, amen, in this coming season. Amen. So listen, let's worship God as we go out. Lift your hands and just begin to speak to him and worship in adoration. Begin to bless him where you are on Facebook Live, on Periscope. Just begin to worship the Lord where you are and begin to honor him with who you are and what you have. Amen. Open your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. Father, we bless you and we honor you. We give you praise and we give you glory, oh God. Father, you are sovereign, you are holy, you are righteous, and you are a just God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for understanding. We thank you, Father, for helping us. Thank you, Lord God, for developing and bringing this word out of me. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but Father, I thank you and I give you praise and I give you glory. We pray for those sick among us tonight, oh God. We pray for our sister in the hospital. We pray for our daughter who's dealing with illness in her body. We pray, God, for our friends that are dealing with cancers and diabetes, oh God. Those that are in bereavement, that are grieving on tonight. I pray for them, God, that you would touch and that you would heal their bodies, that you would dry up diseases, oh God, that you would give strength and infirm faces, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for pastors and leaders on tonight, oh God. I pray, God, for supernatural revelation, supernatural wisdom for the pastors, oh God, that you've called us to feed your sheep, oh God, according to your heart you've given us to the people. And I pray, Lord God, against discouragement. I pray against distraction. I pray against suicide. I pray against the spirit to give up in our pastors and our leaders, oh God. Pastor friend, men of God, woman of God, don't throw in the towel. Pick yourself up. Wash your face. Get back into the ring and keep on fighting. God called you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Our ministry workers, God, strengthen them. Build them up. Show them their assignments. Show them their gifting. Show them who you've called and anointed them to be. In the name of Jesus, bless every family under the sound of my voice. Husbands, mothers, wives, Fathers, brothers, sisters, parents, children, bless our families, God. Bring us together again in this season. I come against the holiday season depression now in the name of Jesus, God. And I thank you, Lord God, that we'll be whole, that we'll be healed, we'll be delivered and made free in Jesus' name. Bless us as we go from this place whenever your presence. Keep us looking to you by faith is our prayer. And if the next time we meet would be at the feet of Jesus, praise you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Clap your hands. be a great thing to have you out. Oh, this Friday night, if you're watching and you're in the DeKalb, Illinois area, if you're anywhere near DeKalb, you've got students down on the campus of NIU, they're at Kishwaukee. We're going to be ministering on Friday night uh, at New Hope Baptist Church, 1201 Twombly Road. I'll never forget that address. Amen. That's our old stopping ground. That's where I met Lady British at NIU. We're going to be ministering there to their college students uh, in a revival this Friday night at 6.30. 30 p.m. I'm trying to put something out. If you've got children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews in the DeKalb, Sycamore area, send them to New Hope, 1201 Twombly Road in DeKalb, Illinois, and let's have a great time together in the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. As I often say, peace and favor belongs to you in Jesus' name. Have a great night. God bless all of you. Amen. Praise Jesus.